All right, so today, boys and girls, we're going to be multitasking while I struggle to print out orders and fight with this freaking Dymo label maker thing. I just almost ran out of all of the fucking curse words. It was relaxing. Mexico was amazeballs. Um, all right. Let's hop into these questions because y'all have a lot of them. Like literally a lot. Tummy tuck pricing. What's reasonable and the difference between DMV, DR pricing and Florida? That's a real question. Quality. Um, well, not just that. Okay. I mean, that's like asking the difference between what's the difference in the price in a tummy tuck in New York and Beverly Hills. Um, and this isn't to throw shade, but that's a semi common sensey question. You pay based on like when I would offer services in Miami because the price point for Miami is substantially less. Um, the price point that I charge for services, even though I, you know, I'm amazing and the knowledge I have and the experience, you still kind of have to, you don't have to, you could pull a whole fucking Mejio and charge $12,000 for a BBL if you want to. And there are surgeons who do that. But typically the rate that is charged for procedures is the standard for the area that the surgeon is in. When it comes to DMV, uh, or the DMV is um, considered local pricing. Outside of some absurd shit, unless you have like a super dumb, crazy popular surgeon, or if you are in a crazy, pricey, expensive area, then your surgeon is typically going to charge local pricing attributed to the fact that they are at a private practice. This differs if a surgeon is at a surgical center. When a surgeon's at a surgical center, they can spread the cost of running a plastic surgery practice amongst other entities. Uh, it doesn't always have to be other plastic surgeons, but surgical centers usually offer med spa services. They'll offer non-surgical or non-invasive cosmetic services that help to bring in other talent and other people to the practice or just other costs to the practice that is able to bring down surgical costs. When you're looking at the cost for a procedure, it is going to be based upon where it is geographically. It's going to be based off of if it's at a private practice or at a surgical center. And then it'll be based off of the surgeon's talent at the end of the day as well, because you could have a surgeon that's in Miami, but if they're just like fucking amazing and they have an ass load of experience after a while, they're going to be like, Hey, I'm not on the same level as them. So I'm not charging the same price as them. And if y'all don't like it, you don't have to come to me, which is what exactly happens when it comes to the DMV, your local pricing for a tummy tuck is going to be somewhere between, I'd say 7,000 to maybe 10,000. Noise. Mm. Does noise matter? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to uh, Florida, standard for tummy tuck might be between 6000 and 10000 And then when it comes to the DR or Columbia, your standard pricing for a tummy tuck is going to be somewhere between, I'd say, 3800 to maybe 5500 these are random raw pricings based off of experiences with clients who have gotten quotes with surgeons in these areas in the past i'd say three months um not even six months these are three month pricing all right shorty do wops what's next <sighs> Cellulitis will massages help? Massages will make it worse. How many pre-op massages should we have if we're new to, I'm assuming these words messages, Juanita, are massages. Cellulitis is a breakdown. Usually when you have a complication, 
typically my answer is going to be to still get massages but it depends on what the complication is when it comes to infections the type of infection that it is matters cellulitis is not something that i would comfortably be able to advise to continue to get massages with because i don't want to spread it i wouldn't want at least not until you're at least two to three days under a very i don't want to say aggressive but a, a, a good enough antibiotic wait what is this order for i am placing orders for or i'm filling orders and printing out orders because my dymo label y'all i wish i had started this live when i started fighting with this freaking thing over here waste all of my fucking paper yep because i got money to burn and just wasting it on product and this thing like literally ate up my labels Husa. if you have not already placed your order for unicorn oil what you waiting for let me go ahead and put this down here while i keep asking, answering this question about cellulitis cellulitis is not something i would comfortably adjust suggest get, continuing to get massages through until you are three days in on a effect an effective antibiotic and then i want to say you can ask a doctor but surgeons don't be not not surgeons definitely not er definitely not pcps they don't know man this is something that I have to stay in my lane with. If you were to get cellulitis, I would like you all to ask your surgeon when they are comfortable with you resuming your post-operative care treatments. My answer is going to be three days, but then I also don't. It, it depends on how aggressive the cellulitis is. Has it become systemic? Is it superficial? I, I don't know. Ask the surgeon. I don't really trust the answer, but... Ask them and hopefully it's along the lines of three days. Massages will bring more white blood cells and circulation to an area. But typically cellulitis is acquired when the skin barrier has become compromised due to a surgeon overstuffing an area. That can manifest in breast tissue if you get a fat transfer to your boobs. Or it can manifest in hips. You get a fat transfer to the hips or in the gluteal area. The But those are areas that you don't massage anyway. So just make sure you get some antibiotics. Then you can go back to massages. Pre-op massages. I see you, you shoved in two questions on one. Because I was like, how do we go from cellulitis to pre-op? Pre-op massages should be done between day 14 pre-op and day 7 pre-op to be able to get the best results for it to be as optimal or you to be able to optimize from the benefits of getting pre-op massages now if you want to start before then you can but think about this right if pre-op massages are meant to detox the body and prep it for plastic surgery that is contingent around helping to detox the lymphatic system, helping to cleanse out your liver, helping to ready the body and prep the body based around lifestyle, diet, hydration, toxins. Before two weeks, like if you were to get it at only, like if you were to get it at three weeks pre-op, you gonna eat dumb shit again, or I don't know, you you have to eat and even healthy foods. I don't know how long y'all been following me, but I'm not a fan of the American FDA. My body has changed like this when I've lived in other countries or when I travel to other countries and I don't change what I eat. The quality of our food here is low key. Fuck that. The quality of our food here is high key toxic. So even if you're eating healthy, you're eating vegetables, high fructose corn syrup is in everything. The actual seed of a vegetable has now been acquired by companies that create gmos from seed to store so you still may be acquiring and ingesting toxins that create free radicals and enzymes that are harmful to your body and not on like a massive oh my god i'm about to die scale no but if your purpose is to detox your body to detox your liver and prep your temple to be ready for plastic surgery 
the more time that you do it ahead and not in succession before your procedure, it decreases its effectiveness. You can get pre-op massages beforehand. I would say around, like let's say if you wanted to start two months pre-op, you can, but you need to keep going because it's going to minimize its effect the further that you get away from when you had said pre-op massage. You can't go and get said pre-op massage two months before your surgery, a month and a half before your first surgery and be like, oh, I'm good because you kept eating. You kind of have to. Eating, live, survival. Food isn't fu food anymore. Food is fuel. And so you still, that's like you want to keep driving the car, but you don't feel like stopping to go get gas or change the oil because you know you're about to get ready for a drag race. So you drag, you go and get an oil change and a tune up and all of this stuff two, three months before the drag race, but you keep driving the car, right? You can start as early as you want. The more you get, the more effective it. Now, keep in mind, I because I, I have surgeons who tune in and other doctors. Uh, I have nursey people, nursey. <laughs> I have medical folk who listen to what it is that I'm saying. There, this industry is so new in its current state. For studies, for to be able to back up some of the things that I'm saying, for example, if I'd be like, oh yeah, you can get pre-op massages starting at three months and it'll be, that's when the effectiveness starts. That is based off of studies, usually longitudinal studies of which no one is paying to do studies on plastic surgery yet. So there's no scientific studies available to say that oh yeah if you start getting your pre-op massages at three months pre-op but not four months pre-op and you get it every single week then you'll have better effects and results on detoxing and prepping the body than if you were to get your pre-op massages starting at two weeks pre-op or one week pre-op does this make sense to you all i've been talking about this pre-op massage for a while and trying to like fill in gaps and i'm trying to like circumvent people who would want to potentially come for me later so i'm like answering question educating and then thinking about the haters that wind up finding me on youtube um months after i wind up posting these videos drop me some unicorns if this makes sense to y'all from the information that is currently available when it comes to how the body responds to detoxing based off of manual manual manipulation if you wanted to start getting your detox or your pre-op massages and you're not going to find again this industry is new your average massage therapist is not even if they do, like let's assume they even know what post-op is most therapists don't offer pre-op massages so when it comes to prepping your body for plastic surgery you don't need to go and look for someone who offers pre-op yet instead just look for someone who's offering regular like this is where base i don't want to be offensive and say they're basic they're not but there is a difference between standard vader lymphatic massages and post-op based treatments you want to find somebody for your pre-op services find someone who just does lymphatic massage they don't have to be skilled they don't even have to know you're getting plastic surgery that's none of their business you might actually confuse them Ask them if they offer post-op. If they say no, say, hey, do you offer lymphatic massages? And your pre-op treatments is where you want to go and get your actual lymphatic massages. Start as early as two months. Not needed. You can go and get them. I don't want y'all to go crazy, balls of all. Like, I need to get a lymphatic massage once a week before, every week before my, my procedure because Ty said so. There's also, you remember we talked about this the other day, that life is fine in moderation. You can do too much. Massages do have a chemical and a hormonal effect on the body. So there's like, if this is a spectrum and here's the happy medium, not doing enough versus doing way too fucking much. They're both possible. Try to find a middle ground with that. If you want to start at two months pre-op, one massage a month in the beginning for month one and then after that as you get closer to your procedure let's say as you enter into month because we're going backwards here uh you go it's a countdown before surgery and then after you have the surgery you wind up counting up so before surgery all the numbers are going to regress and you're going to go from three months post-op to two months post-op to one month post-op if you want to get one at three months post-op cool then get another one at two months i'm um, shit fucking <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm so glad that I, I always I was real around like my kid because all of these f bombs I just dropped. <laughs> Speaking of which, he be dropping bombs. With, you don't think I be hearing him and his little gamer friends? I'm gonna wash your mouth out with soap next time I hear it. Sorry. I told him I was going to body slam him, but he's bigger than me now. So I don't know if that's possible. And I got nails and I'm cute, but I can wash your mouth out with soap, sir. Pre-op massages. So if you were to, your countdown is going to start four months pre-op, three months pre-op, two months pre-op, one month pre-op. If you want to start your, your pre-op detoxing, you can. Anything before one month pre-op, just do it once a month. If you want to get one lymphatic massage six months before your surgery every month, cool. You should, should be doing it any fucking way. When you hit one month pre-op, then if you want to start getting them weekly, you can. Your body would be able to receive it. It will help you heal faster, smoother. It preps your body for surgery. Blah, 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 blah. I hope that answered the question. All right. Um, there, without studies... There is no true answer of how many you should get. All right. I just don't want y'all to go overboard with it. What's next? Oh, y'all is really serious about these questions. God damn it. Can body contouring pre-op help with post-op results? Yes. Final answer. Please don't ask me why. I hope that you all picked up on the why through that last little monologue I just did. Hold on. My family's doing family stuff. Let me read this question. Once you are completely healed, is it beneficial to continue the massages? Does it keep you snatched? Yes, absolutely. That is an amazing question. Thank you, Crystal Jones, for tossing that up there. Yes, 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 and more yes. It is called maintenance. I don't care how you get your bomb body. You have to do something to maintain said bomb body. I quote Dangerous Minds all the time. And in the, now I'm totally dating myself. But in Dangerous Minds, Michelle Pfeiffer was like, you know what? I am giving you an A. And he was like, no, no, I don't want it. I'm going to earn it. She was like, uh-uh, no. Because anybody can earn an A. Can you keep it? Can you, I'm giving you this A and you are going to work. You won't bust your butt for the rest of this year in my class to maintain this A. Anybody can get a bomb body. Can you keep it? It doesn't matter how you get said bomb body. If you get bomb body from the gym, if you get it from changing your diet and you're eating right, if you decide that you want to walk more, get more sleep, you want to drink more water, or you go and, I don't know, get surgery, you do non-surgical body contour because I've been able to get some super stupid results from just body contouring where it looked as good as a surgeon's depends on the client by the way um if you had like body contouring non-surgical body contouring is mind-blowing and game-changing surgeons started to acknowledge how bomb they were around 2005 2008 and but it depends on a client's bmi and their pre-existing or their current metabolic cellular foundation but you can get bomb results with a, a BMI of like a 30, 32, depending on what your non-invasive goals are. Can you keep it? If you get your bomb body in any of these different realms, you still have to do something to maintain said bomb body. Now, it doesn't matter how you get it. You don't have to keep doing the thing that you you, you the route that you went down to achieve said bomb body. But you still have to do something. That's something Let's say, um, I mean, going to the gym is healthy and a, a good look. Eating healthy is a good look. Oh, uh, getting surgery if you want to. I don't, I'm, I don't like playing around with my life. Like one is enough. I love, I, I think I'm an adrenaline junkie and I have jumped out of planes and skydove. I, uh, jump, bungee jumped, um, what white water raft, certain dangerous shit. Once I did it, I can check it off the box and I'm good to go. That's me. You do not have to keep going to get surgery to maintain your bomb body. Instead, it can be maintained through massages or it can be maintained through the gym or it can be maintained with a plethora, a mixture of a variance of all of these things. Minus surgery. You ain't got to keep getting surgery. It's 2021. We have a whole bunch of like really fancy equipment and shit. It's called body contouring. Come see a body contourist. And if you want to be a body contourist, I have a class, so super shameless plug, coming up on April, 
14th and 15th that teaches you how to do body contouring. And when it comes to body contouring, you don't have to have any fancy medical background, license, knowledge, information at all. You just got to have two hands. Actually, you don't. You could have one and still somehow make it do what it do. But we can talk about that another day. Anyways, you do not have to continue to get the massages. I want to be as non-biased of an educator as possible. Do I think you should get them? Absolutely. It's cheaper than surgery. Hell, half the time it's cheaper than personal trainers. Do you know personal trainers are expensive? Um, and so is eating healthy. Body contouring as maintenance programs is not really a bad way to go to be able to maintain this investment that you're entering into. If you want to, um, your maintenance program could either be, what I usually suggest to mm-hmm. my clients are, is either once a month or once every three months to maintain, maintain said results. But um, a maze balls option after getting plastic surgery to help you maintain them. And then I have some clients that I see like after they done mess some shit up and they're like, Ty, can you fix it? No, because I'm retired. But one of my employees can. Next question. How long does the non-surgical non-contouring last? I get this question a lot and I actually included it in my training. How long do you want them to last? Tagging and piggybacking off of the commentary that I just had a second ago when it came to it doesn't matter how you get these results. If you get amazing re- results and you go to the gym, but you also are eating good, you're also drinking water, you're also getting sleep, and then you stop, what happens? You won't lose your results right away, but they will start to slowly morph and change into um, a less favorable physique and aesthetic. Body contouring is the same way. If you do it non-surgically, you don't have to continue to do non-surgical body contouring to maintain your results. But you have to do something. Life is about maintenance no matter what it is. If you go and take a shower once and you're like, hey, I did that. Can check that off the box. You got to do it again. (laughs) Often. (laughs) If you were to work out and become a triathlete and then you stop, your muscles will atrophy. If you, I don't know, get saved and then you stop practicing the scriptures that helped you achieve this new found spiritual peace and then you stop you will backslide i had to make peace with this recently because i don't like repetition i have broken down in every single vehicle i've ever had my entire life because i don't like having to stop to go get gas again i was like i just i just did this why i gotta do it again man fuck this i can make it i got god And I'm out here roaming on gas fumes and faith and did not make it because God helps those who helps themselves. And I hate repetitive stuff. I'm like, I just did this already. I went to the gym yesterday. I washed clothes last week. Why do I have to do it again? Because that's life. It's called adulting. So if you get said amazing bomb body from non-surgical body contouring and you want it to last, you have to keep doing something. And again, I gave you your options. That something does not have to continue to be non-surgical body contouring. But I promise you, it's a little bit cheaper than all the other options. That laundry thing, man. I I was doing that right before I talked to y'all. I was like, yeah, man, come on, man. All right, do you come to the Philadelphia area? No, I don't go anywhere except to, where do I go? I don't go get groceries. I order them joints. Um, summer's about to come and there's mosquitoes outside. I don't like that. Ty fun fact. I don't do bugs, creepy crawly things. I don't do windows. I don't do, do old saggy balls. I don't do toilets. I'll hire a maid. I, I just, I don't. I'm not domestic at all. And um, me leaving the house, that list of the shit I'm gonna leave the house for is getting lower and lower and lower. <laughs> I'll leave to go catch a flight to go lay out on somebody's beach. But no, uh, Ty does not come to Philadelphia. Any info on Mindietta and Dr. Jose Hungria? Simply Tandy. One, it got to go in the question box. And two, it's not Tuesday. Can someone hit Tandy on Tuesdays? All right. Um, and wh- where did this love of Mindietta? You are the fourth person today that has asked me about Mindietta. Why are we so obsessed? I mean, he's cool to be obsessed with. Like, he's bomb. A little extra. Slightly eccentric. Completely eclectic, good results, and very expensive. He's all the ease. 
He's extra, eclectic, eccentric, and expensive. But worth it overall. I've only seen in my past, oh, I don't know how many years, one client who wasn't like super happy with his results. But where is everyone? Why are we obsessed with me? It's not just you. I'm just trying to figure out where it came from. Did he do some dumb shit? Like, did somebody post him or something? Did he go viral? Why is Mindietta trending in the surgery community? Somebody let me know. All right. Do you have any post-op massage recommendations in the St. Louis, Missouri area? No. I do have a post-op group. It's on Facebook. It's called Time Out Post-op Corner. And Facebook, they're starting to like me a little bit. I'm still not going to go back live on the other platform. They like me a smidge. But um, instead of them unfollowing, when it first started, it was unfollowing 190 people a week. Now I'm down to about 60 people a week that it force unfollows from that platform. So because Facebook still doesn't bang with your, your girl completely, you have to type in the whole name for my platform to come up. It is time out post op corner here. I'll type it for you all and spell it for because my comments don't show up or when it's reposted to YouTube or other platforms. But it's time out T A. I M E space O U T space post op post op is put together P O S T O P space corner and it's not like super unnecessary ghetto with a K it's a C C O O C O R N E R now it's crooked and that's no problem all right but um if you go to that group there are other me. There are other dolls who have gotten services and treatments from other providers that we've compiled a list of service providers. I I didn't mean to do that. Oh shit. Until I um unless I've actually worked with a provider, I've gone to them personally myself and I've gotten massages from them or any kind of services and treatments or I've actually trained them, I can't vouch for the quality of someone's services in another state. But after I start, we will see how this class situation goes. Countdown is like a week and a half and some change. So y'all have some time out trained therapists because I I got people coming from er everywhere. I'm so excited. I don't know if Missouri's on that list, though. I'm, I'm going to compile the list of attendees tomorrow. I know Kenya's on there. London is on there. Canada's on there. Bahamas is on there. Of people, like, I'm looking, as people are paying, and therapists, like, they love you all. They are investing in themselves to be able to invest in clients. And they're coming from all over. Or they're tuning in virtually to our virtual immersion option. After the court, is someone coming from New York? Yes, there's two people coming from New York. Don't ask me where. I don't remember. I just know I saw NY. And NY is big. I mean, you could have Bumblefuck NY. You can have Rochester NY. You can have Manhattan NY. And that's not the same as like Yonkers NY. NY is big. But I saw NY. I don't know if that helps you at all. After I've had courses that have people filtering through and I can actually vouch for hey, this person is really, really, really good. Then afterwards, we, yes, there's one person coming from Atlanta. I will be able to say, okay, cool. You can go to see this therapist. Outside of that, the only solution that I can provide now is based off of what other people have experienced when they've gone to these providers and they can say if they like their experience or not. But for now in Missouri, no. The only places that I have hand trained someone, and I know there's people there, is Schwamberg, Illinois, which is right outside of Chicago. There's um, one in Atlanta right now. I haven't trained her, but she is amazing. I love her skill set. Uh, her name is Body Aesthetics ATL. There's one in, she's in Oregon. Which I don't think is, t I don't know how far that is from the Bay Area, but I know she's in Oregon and she flew out to me. There's one in Canada, in Toronto. There's one in Delaware. There is one in Philadelphia. I will get her 
tag and she, and she loved it so much she's coming back the one who's in philly and the one in delaware they're both coming back to this upcoming training um of course the dc maryland virginia area i don't think i've trained anybody in new york yet and then mm, florida specifically miami think that's it boys and girls of who i've already if i didn't name any of those areas Time out has not been there. Oh, 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 oh. There is one in North Carolina. Um, and she's pretty freaking dope too. Uh, don't ask me what part. I don't remember. I always even forget that she's in North Carolina. But she's in the, the Lina. I think it's the northern one. Will you have another class after this April class? It depends on how this class goes. I, um am skittish no i'm not i don't do things that don't make me happy i was very hesitant to even do this in this capacity i don't believe in blocking blessings whether it's mine or someone else's and i do believe that all of the providers their blessing um other people's blessings are connected to you all's blessings so through faith and fear and faith one this time i am stepping outside of my comfort zone i am a, an outgoing um i am an extroverted introvert before i met my fiance i did everything by myself i would travel by myself go to movies by myself take myself to dinner like i am not as peopley as it comes off because it scares me and it freaks me out um i used to do a lot of stuff by myself so this is so much further outside of my comfort zone than you would think because i'm on the other side of a device right now talking to you through a phone or a laptop you know, I can be myself and fun and bubbly without, like, I don't, it's not a confidence thing. Because I used to walk around and be like, oh my God, they don't like me now. I don't give a shit. It's just, I, I got really good at being an introvert, but like a bubbly one. So depending on how this course goes, if this don't go well, we're going to have to like return to sender. Abort mission. I don't know. Maybe it'll just be e-courses or maybe it'll just be virtual I have no idea so I can't the only thing that my marketer and I have talked about it I hired a huge marketing company and they're like so what about the one after that and I was like what you talking about Willis we have this one we have today let's start here okay thank you pumpkin um but yeah I don't I don't know we'll see how me and my anxiety rock out with this one there are still options to attend virtually to the virtual immersion one and i have put out a lot of money to make sure as best as possible with a camera crew hiring um extra um volunteer not volunteers um uh extra personnel um mic runners um moderators for the actual course um to get different camera angles um, we upgraded like the live stream system and devices while you won't be there. I try to get it as close as possible for you to be there. And that's above and beyond what anyone in this industry has or even outside this industry. I've attended workshops and they were virtual and I'm just sitting there and it was like what the camera won't move in. Um, I wasn't able to engage and interact with the pres presenter and there was a comma in what I paid to attend that class. So I tried my best to be able to meet people where they are because it's still COVID outside and I live in Maryland and not everybody, you know, has the opportunity to just like hop on a flight and come. I get it. If you are interested in attending this course, you still can virtually and I will make it as realistic as possible, except I won't be able to reach in and touch your hand and move it and say, not nah, ain't it. That's wrong. All right. Back to said questions. How important is it to have an LMT do your post-op? Only a few estheticians that offer post-op here. LMT doesn't necessarily matter. When it comes to post-op, They, you ideally want your post-op provider to be one of five main professions. You want them to be, what was this for? This is unicorn oil? Yeah, I realized I wasn't multitasking because I talk with my hands. They, you want them to be a massage therapist, an esthetician, a phlebotomist, a dermatologist, or nurse. Those are the key five that you're looking for. But most people, 
this industry is new-ish. It's been around, but it's like cryptocurrency. It's been hiding in plain sight. And there aren't enough people before. Now you can like openly trade Bitcoin on Cash App. But like five years ago, it was on a black market. Did you did people even know how to access the black market? Bitcoin's been around for a long time. People just getting hip to it though. You can now buy a whole fucking car with Bitcoin. That's this industry. As more people are informed, as more people become aware that it exists, as more training and resources, no, to a CNA. A CNA cannot. An RN can, LPN, and there's another one that I forgot that's above a, a LPN. Um, but a CNA is a no. No. A CNA is licensed to make sure people don't die. And then they call the people who keep the person from dying. No shade, but the answer is no to CNAs. Uh, that will change in the future. But right now, for everybody's involved safety, no to CNA. If you don't have a post-op provider, someone who is fluent, then you can go to a regular massage therapist. A regular massage therapist is more versed in the body than an esthetician, but estheticians are more versed in the skin. While an esthetician will be able to tell you more about what's going on with the skin, outside of those like five to seven skin layers, you have a whole human attached to it. And there is an entire system there's stuff going on systemically that estheticians aren't as versed in as massage therapists. So I would employ you to instead look for someone who does lymphatic massage only with the understanding that the knowledge that they come with is not going to have the same acumen to take care of your body after an aggressive plastic surgery procedure. But they will be able to get her done. If you can't find a regular base massage therapist, you can, I'm not a fan of them, but the job here is to, the goal here is to make sure you don't die and you try to heal. When you are getting post-op, it is not to give you amazing results. That is just a byproduct of this, of these treatments. The goal is to facilitate services that allow your body to heal optimally. I preface that disclaimer to next present. I don't like them, but they'll make sure that you don't die and your skin will heal decent is you can get a lymphatic massage therapist or a massage therapist at Massage Envy, but you will need to be able to teach them and educate them on what to do and what not to do with your body. Massage Envy and an esthetician that does not know post-op on the same level and being able to provide post-op care and the other option underneath that and the only reason i'm putting myself there is because i know i'm not always cost effective but i provide 10 different consultations for clients i think three of them are pre-op or four of them are pre-op and six of them are post-op from hey i healed just fine but i want to get my waist smaller help says i need to get that snatch i'm looking for that's when it actually says i want my waist smaller i think that's what that consultation is called there's another one where, and then there's two extra ones that aren't even on there. They're called cape off services because I think all y'all are superheroes. But eventually, even Superman had to take his cape off and allow Lois Lane to come love on him. That is you all. Eventually, as a superhero, you go around saving the world. Who saves you? You take your cape off and you love let other people around you love on you. That service can be, if you're in the DMV area, that is something I will come out the house for. I can do a hands-on in-person tutorial, cape off tutorial, where I teach your spouse how to help you and make sure you don't die. And it is medically, these consultations are medically based, where I go through, these are the pieces of equipment you need to buy. These are the tools you need to buy. These are the emulants you need to buy. This is how you use all of these things. This is how you clean them. This is how you make sure you're doing it safely and properly. All of that is included in these post-op consultations, depending on which one you choose. Again, I know that when you go to the website, I don't want to freak you out. They are not cost effective. But the premise and the ide ideology behind them is I'm teaching you how to replace a me. I am showing you what to do. And you, what I show you, it's not going to be able to be applied to other people. It is based around your procedure, your body, your genetics, your DNA, your lifestyle, your finances, the space availability, your time and like even the, I, I had one earlier with a girl today and I was like, hey, look, I mean, you I know you paid a pretty penny for this. Now, you can go and teach somebody else this if you want to. 
But the stuff that I'm teaching you will only low key apply to you. Even the machine that I just told you to buy, this machine wouldn't work for someone else because it's based off of your body type and the procedures that you had. It's only really applicable to you or somebody else that has your same foundation, went to the same center because that mattered in her case too. She went somewhere that I was like, oh shit, you need this because you went there. It is meant for me to be able to help you save you. I put myself at the bottom of that totem pole because of the cost that's associated with it. In the long run, it will. how much money have people spent in the past? Of You're like, well, I don't know. She says she does post op. I'm going to go try it out. Boom, there's $85. And then you go somewhere else. You're like, ooh, my homegirl went here. She said it was real good. Boom, that's $150. And it wasn't real good. And then you try to buy all these tools and equipment on your own. And you're like, I don't look like how these girls look on Time Out Massages page. You look up and you done already spent like $500, $600, $700 trying to find a person. Or you can invest in yourself on the front end. If you know that there is no one back home, I can help you virtually. COVID was a blessing to everybody. And in so many different ways, you got closer to your family. You were forced to slow down. Your stress levels dropped because you were sitting on the couch eating because you literally, it was illegal to leave the fucking house. Ty broke all the rules, but... Most of you all did not. Um, and through that and through COVID and through the world having to level up our virtual game, I've put together consultations specifically catered to meet you wherever you are, wherever your finances land and whatever. You, how committed are you to protecting this investment that you just went and got? There is a consultation for you. Recapping before I move on, you got find a post op therapist. Find a lymphatic therapist, find a massage therapist that massage envy or an esthetician or contact Ty in that order. Or you can skip all of the above and just contact Ty. I got a lot of time on my hands. I don't know if y'all follow me on Facebook, but my fuckery has been on a thousand today. I've been harassing the fuck out of everybody around me because I had time and I can. All right. Um, cool. I went off on that question, so I hope I answered it. I just be talking and when I'm done, I was like, did I answer the fucking question? Is your class in person or online? Both. All right. What's next? Hey, don't ask me no more questions. I got um, 17 minutes to get these out. No more questions. Also, I wanted to know how was your day? Oh, go back to You're like the sweetest virtual person I met or one of because I got a couple sweeties. My day was really good. I harassed the shit out of people. I did not get my cannabis in yet. I will. Did some laundry, did some research, read some medical journals, finally unpacked our suitcases. Um, I'm trying to mail out orders. My day was um, semi-productive, semi-fuckery, and completely relaxing. Thank you for asking. I wanted to know how your keto diet was going see what had happened was then there was mexico and then those were the lord's carbs and he wanted me to be happy right yeah and then that was in the past and we shouldn't be living there and today is a new day end of story final answer <laughs> that's how um <laughs> my keto was going <laughs> like i don't have a whole wedding to plan for <laughs> i showed my ass in Mexico <laughs> but I'm back on it today is a new day and um my bumps have gone down because I have since getting back I'm back on my water I'm not eating a whole bunch of meat um I had a mushroom and snap pea salad earlier today and it, it was good I'm trying to decrease my salt life is love <laughs> um I fell off the wagon but I'm back and I have gotten rid of the travel pounds. I, uh, what happens in Mexico stays in Mexico. Mm hmm. I got rid of, I, I just like that. Oh my gosh. I picked up, uh, how much weight did I pick up? Like five pounds. And I, I, I got rid of them. They're gone. All right. When can we wear the boy short faja? Whenever you want to. It just ain't comfortable. As long as it doesn't create, what is it called? Chicken butt. You can wear it whenever. How was Mexico? It actually wasn't even hot. Mexico was actually pretty cold. 
I, um, not carbs, not crabs. <laughs> I knew what you meant. I have 26 days post-op and I drain OD. What can I do to stop producing so much liquid? Water pills. As long as you, damn, at 26 days post-op, you actually might want to look into getting a prescription for that. It's called LASIK or LASIK, but not like the eye surgery kind. It's LASIK. I think it ends in a K and not an X, or maybe it's an X and not a K, or maybe it's a Q. Whatever. Contact, let me look it up. I have technology in front of me. Let's see which one it is. LASIK water pill. That's the most common one, and there's generic names for it. Um, premature ejaculation kit. What the fuck? Lay six. All right, it's yeah, it's an X at the end. L A. I don't know what. What is going on with my like birth controls came up, spirometers came up, premature ejaculation kit came up. I'm way too childish for this web search right now. But it's L A S I X. Talk to your you, that it's by prescription only. You need to get it from your PCP and it should drastically help out. It did escalate fast. It should drastically help out with your water retention and your fluid production. You might want to, while I do love me some post-op, now on the flip side of this, because I have mad respect for lymphatic massage therapists, post-op um, people are not always as versed in lymphatics as they can be. It's a lot to learn here, man. Like, as I'm going through my marketing company, stress me out today. I, I don't think she follows me on Instagram, which I, I hope she don't follow me on Instagram. If she do, I'm not sorry. She stressed me out today because she was like, Ty, I need you to create an itemized, a timed itemized run of show for your courses. And I was like, what does that mean? She was like, you need to put a start and stop time for each section. I was like, what? I don't want, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't know. That's stressful. <sighs> um... What was I about to say about that? Damn it. I lost my train of thought. It was a reason why I started talking about that and how she stressed me out. Um, was it water retention? Was it was about to go talk about weed? Mm -mm. Nah, I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Book about weed grinder. Um, oh, I talk about it in the class. So as I'm going, that's what it was. Boom. God, you so bomb. I was going through and I was like, how am I going to make all of this shit fit in two days? Like, I literally struggled to make this whole class. I was trying to make it fit in one day back before I met her. And she was like, mm-mm, baby, you won't stress everybody out, including your students. So I tried to make this information fit in two days. And by the grace of God, hopefully we will. It's just so much information to know. I don't know how all of that fits in such a small time span. And then you have to become proficient at it. It's like, it doesn't save a lot of time for you to become proficient in other things. So by the time somebody becomes proficient in post-op, they're circling back to become proficient in lymphatic. If you, man, I'm so glad this story has a purpose. And I was able to follow my little trail of where the fuck I was going. These bread, virtual verbal breadcrumbs. Um, if you are retaining this much fluid at this far along post-op, you might need in conjunction with post-op regular lymphatic massages and LASIK and possibly better compression all right I'm on the last hook of my stage two Faha should I buy another or get it taken in I'm one month post-op it depends on what procedure you had so poetic vibes um I need to know what you got going on what are your thoughts on GNC water x and total cleanse lymph man that's so timely I like them but there's a difference between good and great good is the um water x or you can um the amazon version is called water away or the total cleanse lymph um nature sunshine makes some lymphatic pills as well herbal based they're all good the prescription that your surgeon's gonna give you that's great and then the mediocre bullshit wanna be maybe make it happen version of all of that is diuretics or di diurics i always mix that up i think it's diuretics and I don't like them. I just want to look it up to make sure. Diurex. I don't like those. Those are trash. That's like the D-list celebrity that was popping maybe like eight years ago. And now everybody just lets them in because they feel bad for them. But they're not really like effective or cool anymore. That's diurex. Better is Water X, Water Away, or not diuretics. The name of the brand is diurex. 
D-I-U-R-E-X. Don't like that one. Water X, Water Away, Total Length Cleanse. Those are good. And then a prescription water pill is the best. It is great. Okay. You had BBL and Lipo 360. Instead of wasting the last 10 minutes, Poetic Vibes, on answering that question because it's a pretty lengthy question, I would instead like to send you to my YouTube where I talk about going down on Faha sizes. There's an entire playlist dedicated to this. It's called Faha University. And I educate on what, when, and why to go down on your Faha. The answer to your, or to get a smaller Faha, the answer to your question is no. But I want to explain why so you don't do the wrong dumb shit. So go to Faha University on YouTube and it'll answer that question as to why. Only because I ran my mouth for most of this and I um, only got nine minutes left. How long should my unicorn oil last? It depends on how you're using it. Unicorn oil, it should you should not be bathing in it, even though I know some clients do. Like I got some clients that use it for their hair because it has moisturizing properties that pass through um certain tissue barriers but your unicorn oil if you get 3.4 ounce typically should last you about two months if you even if you're using it every day because you don't need that much your unicorn oil you should be using on your torso area and you need maybe about five to eight squeezes or five to eight pumps to use it so it should be lasting you between about two months <laughs> Um, if it's not, DM me and we can figure out what's going on. Thoughts on phenamine. I have mixed thoughts on phenamine. Um, I know it's effective, but there are safer options. Um, and you don't know if you have underlying conditions or not. Um, I've actually tried it before myself. It did not give me heart palpitations. It did get rid of my appetite. You can't take it long term. So those are my thoughts on it. Fine, uh, you can get safer options. Mine lasted less than a month or around a month. Um, you might have been using a bit much. It's supposed to have a drag to it. Oh man, this is a damn good question. June doll, put this back up again tomorrow because I want to talk about it. Are you team Faha or team no Faha? I'm both. It depends on your foundation. I'm not going to remember to answer this in detail. Shout outs to Weed and ADD. So, June Doll, whenever you come hang out with us again tomorrow, bring that question back up for me. I had arm lipo and thigh lipo, so maybe that's why. Yeah, so if you have more areas that you're using it on, it may not last you two months. That does make sense. All right, what's next? Um, when do we start using vitamin C, the ordinary 23% vitamin C serum too strong? Huh? Um, you start using vitamin C right away, right after surgery. You take it along with your iron pill, vitamin C. Um, is the ordinary 23% vitamin C serum too strong? Are you trying to apply it topically or take it sublingually and put it underneath your tongue? I'm not sure how you're trying to use the vitamin C. Your classes aren't complete, right? I just want to make sure I didn't miss the launch. Um... There are a few, we had to wind up adding another to the post-op class. The post-op class sold out in six hours. The, I added another to the post-op class. That is April 9th and 10th. There are a few spaces left for that. And I think there might be two spaces left for, or, or one space left for the body contouring because somebody else bought one today. Um, when do I start... And how often do I use rosehip oil on my incisions to close them? I wouldn't start using rosehip oil until week um, till week two. All right, what's next? Surgery center is providing me with the Faha, but I also bought a stage one or two from Curvy Gals. Use both or not? Nah? You can, but your stage two, the answer that I get on when to switch to a stage two is when your body starts to blow back up. There's four standard measurements that you take for post-op. And the number that matters the most is your natural waistline, which is either two or three fingers above your belly button, depending on how tall you are. And it's the point where your waist starts to naturally curve back in, even if it's just a slight curve because you're swollen. Wherever that is, that is your natural waistline. That measurement, when that number starts to go back up and you're in your stage one, that's when it's time to switch to the stage two. Um, curvy gals is intense. Uh, I love curvy gals. 
I don't like their price, but they, I love their, oh my God, their customer service is amazing. At least in person. Her mama is the sweetest. I was there a few weeks ago and loved her mama. I would give her a hug if it wasn't COVID. But the Curvy Gals is an intense Faja. I wouldn't suggest anybody. I, find another stage two to get into. That ain't the one right away. You shouldn't try to get into your Curvy Gals until you're like three weeks post-op. Like the top of three weeks post-op. Oh, the serum. Oh, you can start applying the serum. Um, the vitamin C serum. Start that. Because that is for skin retraction more than anything else. Start that at four weeks post-op. Please don't hate me, but I don't know where to purchase runs and hides. Is it okay? April 9th and 10th. I purchase or could I purchase it now? Jo Johnny's, um, DM me. <laughs> just, just DM me, babe. May you please post the tummy tuck and self massage video again or the link? Yeah, I'll put it in my stories. There's a few of them. And, um, I think I, I was supposed to give it to somebody else, Timla. And I forgot. So I'm sorry, Timla. Um, I told you I was gonna forget though. But yes, yes I, I can. How can I lose five pounds ASAP? We went over that in my DMs. I can screenshot the answer that I gave her because I don't want to repeat it. And I only got four minutes. Um, should I use Hippoclans after surgery? Um, 12, 24 hours post-op, I have dissolvable sutures. If you have dissolvable sutures, you should be, um, I mean you can shower but they're not getting on the incision. Your if you're getting a tummy tuck, those incisions in that incisional line needs to stay dry above all else. It is hell if they wind up getting wet and they start dissolving too soon before the skin has healed and occluded around it. Um uh if you're interested in her question back to the weight loss question, if you she asked how to lose five pounds right away and I gave her a recipe of how to lose twenty pounds within a month or two, but you have to it's an O C D as regimen that you need to maintain but it works um shit i did it i waited to the last goddamn minutes and i think i lost 30 pounds in a month and a half um before my surgery so i'll screenshot what i sent to her and i'll just post it in the story i'm not gonna say don't i'm not gonna remember to send it to you just come back and look at my stories later um you can use hippoclans or dial soap if you want but it can't get on the incisional line all right we got two minutes i'm surprised they didn't give me my countdown yet maybe they like me What's the best to put in my belly button to avoid an infection? Tea tree oil on a gauze? Nah, you ain't got to shove nothing in there. Or, or You don't have to put anything on there, any ointment or anything like that. Um, keep it clean and dry. You can put gauze, cover it up with Band-Aid. You can put an um, earplug smushed into the gauze. Just keep the area dry, but you don't have to put an emollient inside the belly button. If you want to put it... Why do you love shoving shit into places? Like, I see people like putting keys and ears or like weird ass things that's not q-tips up nose and like crazy shit and belly buttons even without surgery and it wasn't a belly button ring um what was i gonna say if you want to put something on it you can use a uh, silver dime cream all right there's my countdown i got a minute and 49 seconds to get through the worst of these fucking questions do you recommend taking z -Quil the first couple nights because i'm not used to sleeping on my back yeah Zequil, or you can ask for an ambient prescription. How was your trip? How often should I wash my faja? Every day, but that's why you need to have more than one faja. How long should you wait for your second? And is it worse than the first round, especially with sculpting? You need to medically wait at least three months, um, especially if it's on the same area. I've seen surgeons do it within weeks. Um, I'm not a fan of that. Um, your lymphatic system and your immune system are already compromised but as they've done it and it was on different areas so let's say if they did your front the first surgery and then they did your back the second surgery within three to four weeks of each other seen it not a fan don't suggest it medically three months professionally occupationally preferred is six months between rounds all right i am 10 weeks post-op this week and my arms are still sore out of the arm vest can i stop can i still stop using yes you can stop using it um you what you do with your compression garments are a matter of personal preference past eight weeks if you your body is your body's talking to you and if your body is like yo i still need it keep wearing it totally up to you do what your body says you need when selecting a massage therapist should i care to should they be able to remove my seroma 
Um, no, unless they are trained in doing that, it's called aspiration. I wouldn't have anybody aspirate me unless that's what they like. They know how to do that. So ask if they have like wound care certification. I got 14 seconds. Um, capitation required part of our post-op care. No, you can get post-op care, pure, amazing from starting.